In the spring of 1912, two children from the village of Malaya perished Chepina, Poltava province, accidentally discovered numerous gold and silver objects in the sand dunes near the Vorskla River. While walking along the shore, one boy's foot fell into a large vessel. In trying to remove his leg, the two boys first pulled out the vessel, which turned out to be gold, and then several more gold cups, which, according to their accounts, were lined up one after the other. Seeing the expensive dishes, the mother of one of the children thought that someone had robbed the village church and immediately informed the local guards. Soon, however, the rumor about the hidden treasure attracted not only the villagers, the guards, the local bailiff, but also all kinds of curious people. Began frantic digging, digging, even breaking, scattering and even handing out pieces of gold leaf to the crowd of curious children gathered around. The first group of objects was handed over to the local bailiff, who did not take any special measures, neither for its storage nor for the security of the location. Thus, the search and excavations continued without interruption. Meanwhile, the local villagers found several more smaller and parts of previously discovered objects. Only two days after the discovery, the Poltava Archive Commission dispatched the archaeologist Izaretsky, who saw a crowd of villagers, adults and with small children in their arms, walking towards the deposit, where people of all ages and genders were already diligently digging in the sand. Whoever wanted, he managed to collect the smaller objects from the villagers, documented what had already been handed over to the bailiff and described the place where they were found. According to his notes, the area is sand dunes, without any traces of mounds or artificial embankments. We learn more about the discovered treasure from what was published by N. Makarenko a member of the Imperial Archaeological Commission, who arrived later. He not only completed the excavations, collected some of the objects left behind by the local residents, but also learned valuable information for future research. According to the memories of the villagers, the objects stood in the ground in a certain order. Gold, silver, and glass goblets seemed to be at the top. Below them, straight or tilted, stood plates, vases and other objects placed around the largest vessel. Karpovanovich Major, one of the first discoverers years later, said that the find was about 75 to 100 meters from the lake at the foot of a hill, and the objects were buried in an area of about a meter and a half. At the top was the large vessel with two handles, then a vase, jugs, bracelets, a sword, etc. He also remembered that under the things there was a lot of ash, coal, and also bones, part of a human skull kneecaps, astragalus. After compiling an inventory, weighing all items collected by the local authorities, they were sent to the Konstantinovgrad Police Department, then to Poltava, and from there to the State Bank in St. Petersburg. From the bank, handed over to the Archaeological Commission. And from 1914 until today they are kept in the state hermitage, Russia. In the meantime, 
the famous philanthropist and hapless member of the Imperial Archaeological Commission B. Kanenko managed to buy some of the items that had already ended up in antique shops in Poltava and Kiev. He subsequently offered them for a fee to the Archaeological Commission and the State Hermitage Museum. Today, however, experts assume that B. Hanenko offered for purchase not only objects from the locality near the village of Malaya Perish Chepina, but also other random finds of uncertain origin. Registered as originating from the village of Malaya Perish Chepina. However, another part of the objects was already stored in the Poltava Regional Museum. In stages, the Archaeological Commission bought, lost, objects from the treasure. N. Makarenko himself handed over fragments of ceramics, leather, rings, Byzantine coins. A string of those with images of the emperors Heraclius, Phocas and Constantine II, etc. Thus, most of the objects ended up in the Hermitage, with the exception of those from the Poltava Museum. Some of which were lost during the Second World War. Fifty years later, the Ukrainian researcher Asmilenko excavated the site near the village of Malaya Perish Chepina. Did not find anything in the excavations, rejected the version of the presence of ashes and coals, and thus the assumption of a possible cremation. Carried out not far from the place of hiding the treasure. According to her, the ash layer is a natural sedimentary embankment among the sand dunes, resulting from the proximity to the water. In 1989, a second expedition took place, this time, Bulgarian Soviet, under the leadership of D. Vitanov, which aimed to correlate the burial near the village of Malaya Perish Chepina with the grave of the Bulgarian Khan Kubrat. After surveying the area around the location of the treasure, one of the hills was assumed to be artificial, i.e. deliberately loose. Thus, in memory of the ruler of Great Bulgaria, a concrete block and a stone column were placed, marking the grave of Khan Kubrat. The first researchers of the treasure dated it to the 7th century. Later, the main interest was related to the ethno-cultural affiliation of the treasure. One of the first hypotheses, expressed by B. Rybakov, today without adherence, connects him with the Slavs. Most of the researchers, however, rightly attribute the find to the steppe peoples. The thesis of the German scientist J. Werner deserves special attention, according to which the treasure should be associated with the ruler of Great Bulgaria, Khan Kubrat, interpreting it as inventory from his grave. The thesis of the German researcher mainly rests on the monograms of the two rings from the treasure with monograms read by V. Seibert as Kubrat and Kubrat Patrician. The find from the village of Malaya Perish Chepina includes objects of a diverse nature from the 6th-7th centuries the work of different production centers. The largest group is represented by the monuments of Byzantine origin. Vessels with seals from a Constantinople workshop, as well as gold works of the Torviktik. Among them a sword with a gold lining and incised crosses, luxurious belt fittings, coins that are part of jewelry, bracelets with inlays, as well as three monogrammed rings. 
One of the earliest vessels among them is a silver dish with the image of a cross. A second silver dish with a chrism and an inscription in Latin with the name of the bishop of the town of Tommy, Patton, end of the 5th, first quarter of the 6th century. A luxury silver set of jug and dish for washing hands with seals from the time of Emperor Mauritius Tiberius, 582-602. Eight of the coins in the hoard are Constantinople Solidi of 24 carats from the time of the emperors Mauritius, Phocas, from the joint reign of Heraclius and Heraclius Constantine. The rest are light solids of 20 carats from the reign of Heraclius and his sons and the beginning of the reign of Constant II. Specialists define this as a feature of the numismatic material in the Parish Chepin Hoard. Since all other coins in the northern Black Sea steppes from the 6th to the beginning of the 7th century are light solids. 8. The Byzantine monuments in the composition of the treasure came in different ways. A portion probably fell into the hands of the Avars, either as booty or tribute. It is assumed that after the rejection of dependence on the Avakarganate, they passed to the treasury of the ruler of Great Bulgaria. Others were certainly received as a gift to Khan Kubrat and his uncle Organa on behalf of the Byzantine emperor Heraclius. 610 to 641. A second, smaller group in the composition of the treasure are the monuments of Sassanid origin. Among them is the earliest object, a silver dish with an image of a Sasanian Shahinshah of uncertain identification, Shirai. 241 to 272 Shapur II 309 to 379 or Yezdegerd II 439 to 457 A second silver dish with cosmogonic symbolism a gold jug with a Kalani image at the base of the handle as well as two gold cups so far, there is no answer as to how these vessels came into the hands of the Bulgarian Khan. One version is that they were probably bought by traveling merchants. But it cannot be ruled out that at some point they were in the possession of the court of the Hagen of the Western Turks. The third group of monuments has a Tuk Sogdian origin. These are items widely distributed among the Turco-nomadic environment. It is likely that some of them belong to the treasury of the Western Turkic Khaganate. And after the death of the Khaganate in 630, they passed to their vassals, the Khazars, or they were military spoils of the Bulgarians from the northern Black Sea steppes. To this group belong two sets of 10 silver and 11 gold cups. The silver ones are marked with the sign, lambda, and the gold ones were probably made later, following the pattern of the silver ones. Among the most interesting vessels is a wooden jug lined with gold plates with plastic decoration, representing the non flammable blackberry motif and also gold fittings for the mouth of a quiver and for a saddle, decorated with tufts of half palmets, etc. The wand, mid-7th century, 153 by 2.2 cm, sphere diameter 3.4 cm, is composed of a sphere and cylindrical parts that cover a wooden base. The sphere at the top is made of two parts, the upper one has an opening, 
and the lower one passes into a hollow cylinder. The original staff is composed of eight parts, with a wooden core in the middle, determined by experts at the Hermitage to be ash. They are made of gold leaf of different composition and thickness, which indicates that repairs have been carried out. The identical archaeometric characteristics of the upper and lower parts of the staff link it to the items of Turkic origin in the hoard. The rectangular hole in the upper side of the sphere is identical to the holes for attaching square plates that lined the wooden coffin of the buried person. Based on these marks, Experts date its manufacture to the last period of its owner's life, just before his death, as the insignia of the highest authority among the nomads. The connection of the scepter with the Turkic items from the treasure suggests some change in the symbols of the ruler's dignity among the Bulgarians. This probably happened in the middle of the 7th century. As a result of the new ethno-political situation in the northern Black Sea steppes and the new contacts of the Bulgarians with the Turco-Khazars, the writon is of general duty, 29 centimeters diameter, at the mouth 7.6 centimeters, two-legged, composed of two welded conical shapes. At the mouth, the connection between the separate parts. The lower edge and on both bodies there is a decoration of relief strips composed of parallel grooves and hemispheres. It is made of gold and is an integral part of the owner's armament and equipment. Similar writings are known from the hoard from Nad Street Me Close, Transylvania and from a grave of a prominent Ava warrior from Boca, Hungary. The Byzantine belt ends 13.5 x 5.56 cm. Is a double-sided tongue-shaped cassette with a sharp tip and double concave sides. It consists of two welded symmetrical parts. In the central part on one side there is a net ornament forming diamond and triangular cells for inlaid glass stones. Around it, a double border of hemispheres and pointed leaves with triangles between them. On the reverse side, two seven-leafed palmettes with a detached central pointed leaf are depicted. Located along the longitudinal axis, the tip is made of gold with inlaid glass stones, together with the belt with identical stylistic morphological features, they represent a set. Probably from the luxurious patrician belt, Singulum, presented to Khan Kubrat by Emperor Heraclius. The shape is characteristic of Byzantine belt fittings from the 6th-7th centuries. Similar palmettes, but with a different interpretation of the leaves, decorate the set of 11 gold cups from the treasure, probably produced in a workshop from the northern Black Sea area. The ring, stamp with monogram, organa, Patricius, it consists of a ring with a circular section and a circular plate. On her face, a cross-shaped monogram with the initials of the owner of the ring. On the vertical shoulder, above, the combination, R, is red. To the right of the horizontal arm is the usual sprogistic construction, PTKI, meaning Patricus. On the right side is the letter abbreviation, VTNO. Deciphered by specialists as Vitora, N, 
Oi Patrick E. Oi. He is identified with the person of Bat Organa, the ruler of the Bulgarians in the first Turkic Haganate, uncle and regent of the little Kubrat. Baptized in Constantinople in 619, when he received the title of patrician and honorary gifts. It is made of gold. It consists of two cast parts, subsequently welded. The face of the tile is sanded and the monogram is incised with a chisel. A cruciform monogram is incised on the face with the initials of the owner, read as, H-O-V-R-A-T-O-Y, Kubrat, Cobra. The absence of the title, Patrician, on this ring suggests that it was most likely made and received as a gift when the young Kubrat visited Constantinople. Together with his uncle, the regent Organa, the ring is made of gold, consisting of two soldered parts. The monogram is incised. Amphora height 48.6 cm, mouth diameter 12.1 cm, body diameter 26 cm. Diameter. Bottom 12.5 cm. The amphora has a pear-shaped body with a tall, wide neck and a profiled mouth. The bottom is flat. Below the mouth and high above the shoulders are two symmetrical handles. Plastically shaped like stylized figures of dolphins. Three decorative bands adorn the smooth surface of the amphora. Below the mouth is a frieze of caraways. In the middle, an acanthus tray with piles of fruit, alternated with bearded heads of selenes, and at the bottom, acanthus leaves. Vessels with handles shaped like dolphins are characteristic of the Hellenistic and Roman traditions, found on vessels for storing grain, wine and olive oil. It is made of silver and is gold-plated. It is made up of several separate parts that are then welded together. The mouth, neck and handles are cast, and the body parts are formed by plastic deformation. The amphora was probably repaired at some point, as the lower part of the vessel is from another silver amphora. The thick layer of plating has obliterated the areas of the solder joints. Jug cup 18.2 by 8.2 by 8.3 cm is composed of several separate parts that are subsequently welded together. The mouth, neck and handles are cast, and the body parts are formed by plastic deformation. The amphora was probably repaired at some point, as the lower part of the vessel is from another silver amphora. The thick layer of plating has obliterated the areas of the solder joints. A pear-shaped body with an outwardly curved funnel-shaped mouth and an openwork seat of flat circles soldered around the base in a horizontal row. The handle is intricately profiled. A trefoil is soldered to the body, which passes into a perpendicular five-leafed palmette. In the space between them, a round handle made of spheres. The jug is made of hammered gold leaf. The surface shows traces of probing with a tool. It was produced in a Sogdian workshop. On one side, the jug is deformed. So it is assumed that it was originally placed in the neck of the large silver, gilded amphora when it was deposited. 
Vessels of a similar shape and an identical handle of spheres are characteristic of Sogdian metalwork. Their images are known on the wall decoration of dwellings in ancient Penjakent. Dated to the 7th-8th centuries. Close parallels are known among the Gumbaboni and Azora Totopusta complexes, Hungary, associated with the aristocratic Ava 6th century Ava, as well as among Chinese silver metalwork. From the Tang period, 608 to 907, the set of gold goblets 9.9 .9 by 8.2 by 4.2 centimeters. They have a bell-shaped body with a foot shaped like a multi-walled sphere flanked by a single relief ring. The stool is a flattened cone. The lower part of the cup is decorated with four seven-leaved palmettes, which alternate with stems ending in a heart-shaped leaf. The ends of the palmate leaves are curled inward, and the middle is heart-shaped. The cups are made of gold leaf. The relief is formed by hammering on the outside. The sphere is made of two parts formed by plastic deformation. It is joined to the body and the chair, and the places of the connections are masked with welded circles of wire. Inside there are bone particles, the ringing of which had apotropaic functions. 26 In the composition of the treasure there are 11 similar golden cups. Their form is classical, but in the 6th-7th centuries it was spread over a wide Euro-Asian area. They were probably made in imitation of the similarly shaped silver cups of the hoard's composition. The floral ornament resembles the five-leaved palmet on the end of the patrician belt. The work of a Byzantine workshop but the treatment of the leaves is in the spirit of the Sogdian artistic tradition. It is assumed that the set of gold cups was made in a northern Black Sea atelier that met the needs of luxury dishes intended for the royal table. Belt buckle 9.6 by 5.3 by 4.05 cm. It consists of a lyre-shaped frame, a tab with a profiled section and a socket for an inlaid stone, hinged with a thyroid plate. On the obverse, a relief decoration of three, symmetrically placed, ruffled, palmettes, whose short leaves end with rounded ends. The composition is inscribed in a plastic frame following the shape of the tile. In the middle, a plastic row of large circles. The attachment to the strap was by three rivets with hemispherical heads located in the corners. The buckle is made of gold. The ornament on the tile is cast. The treatment of the palmettes suggests Sogdian production or performance influenced by the Sogdian artistic tradition. Today, thanks to the financial, administrative and judicial measures taken by the Archaeological Commission, the treasure stored in the Hermitage includes over 800 gold and silver objects, vessels, Weapons covered with gold and silver foil, horse harness, belt fittings, jewelry inlaid with precious and glass stones, and 70 gold Byzantine coins. The total weight of the gold objects is 25 kilograms. The silver ones, about 50 kilograms.